Now, I'm not really sure why, but I was thinking about cookie cutters the other day. So I think it's time we talk to the utterly annoying boat biters of Don't Starve Together, and it's better late than never. Although these beasts have always kind of felt a bit on the insignificant side at the end of the day, they are actually 110% essential to our end game progression, especially nowadays. So with that, let us learn where they are, what they are, how their loot works, and when said end game progression even matters. Let's get to it. Well, after we spend an arm and a leg on our nautical circles first, of course. For you see, ain't no cookie cutters being encountered by anyone without us first setting sail to one of our salt brines out there in our swell oceans or even rough oceans. The thing is, however, ocean generation is a bit wacky more often than not. So some salt brines may be a lot closer to land than you might think or what I might get. Wherever the case, if you find salt, you will find cookie cutters guaranteed. So good luck out there on the high seas because I can't really give you any more than that. You're going to have to find them yourself. And better luck to you once you do locate what you're looking for, as that boat of yours is going to be looking like a midnight snack to these things soon enough. Cookie cutters are actually 100% neutral to us as players, but will snap at boats the moment we get about a boat length away from them. Not only that though, once a cookie cutter aggros onto it, nearby ones will too, which ends up presenting a lot of problems at the end of the day. Cause here's the poop. If left unchecked, even a single cookie cutter will proceed to make multiple leaks per boat potentially. Now. They're actually supposed to only make one leak, as after forming one, they're meant to turn neutral for 30 seconds. However, this is not always the case. But whatever the case, each leak will cause a boat's health to drop by one per second, which doesn't sound too bad. But couple that with our previous mention of being easily aggroed onto by many cutters at once, and things are gonna get ugly. Especially without any boat patches, so don't forget them. But in the event that you do, you better be ready to attack as many as you can, as quickly as you can, as not only will hitting cookie cutters actually slow them down, we can just eventually kill them outright to stop them from drilling altogether. Be mindful though, if not killed within two hits, cookie cutters will actually fight back. And at 20 damage apiece, the hits could stack up there too. All in all, the thing you need to take away from this is, numbers are going to overwhelm you eventually. So we need to be smarter than straight up gun ho murder. So in comes the slow murder, everyone. Approach a salt brine, find a group of cookie cutters, potentially paddle very slowly up to them until you see one or a couple aggro on. Stop and wait for them to reach ya. Kill them in said small group and repeat if needed. Hopefully using something stronger than a spear to make sure you kill them in but two hits. And heck, you can kite the suckers too if you want. One hit, dodge and repeat until they're finished off, or get two hits, dodge and finish them off in one hit that way. In short, small numbers, slower kills. And honestly, and perhaps unfortunately, that is how it will go for pretty much every Salt Prime visit and darn near every character in the game too. It's somewhat bad, as it makes cookie cutters even more tedious to deal with, but they still do have some unique mechanics that makes up for it. And you know what? Wendy will pull ahead with at least one advantage, of course. Abigail. Cookie cutters on water will flee if damaged and not killed. And this occasionally extends to even cookie cutters nearby these damaged ones because they're seemingly scared. This does offer some protection in the long run, of course, but it can make it difficult as they kind of continue to spread out, so you best be paying attention to where things are. But this is also where Abigail comes in handy. Rile her up, sail towards her targets, and she will just eventually take them down for you. Again, however, unless you are one-shotting them, you're really only going to experience most of that with a Wendy. So let's talk a way to actually distract cookie cutters and prevent boats from getting attacked as all characters, yes? Yes, and I hope you've got some wood on ya, because you're gonna need it. If dropped into the water, even after your boat has been targeted, mind you, wood-based resources like logs, boards, twigs, living logs even, and driftwood will bait cookie cutters over to them until they have been depleted. 
Now this tends to calm cookie cutters, just like how they're supposed to calm after they eat part of our boat. But again, it's not always the case, so be mindful there. And also be mindful of the fact that them leaping out of the water to eat any of this stuff will still damage you if you're nearby. Now this is kind of fun, it's a neat mechanic that they're eating all this stuff instead of our stuff, but you're gonna need a lot of it in order to keep them distracted so that you can do what you need to do in these salt brines. So just do with this information as you please. But after all of that, why do we care and what are we even getting out of it? Well, cookie cutters will drop monster meats guaranteed. However, our biggest get will be their cookie cutter shells here. Dropped but 25% of the time, which definitely feels lower and should definitely be higher still, cookie cutters could potentially go into some cookie cutter caps if you wish. And why would you wish for such a thing? Well, you probably wouldn't, as while they are quote unquote cheap, and provide a 35% resistance to wetness when atop your noggin, they will absorb only 70% of damage each hit while offering 525 durability overall. Which is kinda good, but also kinda not. And yeah, that's it as well. No protection from any other additional cookie cutter damages, no return damage to any attackers, nothing of the sorts. They feel so close to being decent, but they kinda fall short. So then, why care at all, and why did you call them Essential Beard? Well, because 10 of these suckers go into completing the first stage of Pearl's house here. And Pearl's house is needed in order to fully complete her quest, which is then needed to reach Don't Starve Together's Eye of the Storm end game contents. And yeah, it's a whole involved thing that is way too much to get into here. All that matters for us today is that cookie cutters are a must to get through it. But finally, if you have the adverts and a tackle receptacle at hand, cookie cutter shells are actually needed to create your very own snow day, stupefying, rainy, and heavy weighted lures. Snow is good for winter, of course. Rainy is great for when it's raining. Stupefying makes catching fish faster because it drops their stamina quick. And heavy weighted lures will just catch bigger fish. Easy peasy there. And there you have it everyone, kinda easy peasy all around. But it was an unexpected mob guide on cook gutters for Don't Stop Together nonetheless. They have kind of avoided us for a long time. And I just wanted to change that, while also making it known just how bloody important these little biters actually are. Kill them slowly, just not that slowly mind. As one last note to leave you with is that they respawn in but 90 seconds. Good luck. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, bite back, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.